Hello, ladies and gentlemen, loyal imperial citizens and rebel scum alike. Welcome to another Liam Maiden gameplay video. Back with more Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes today. And now a while ago, I made a video um, setting out my recommendations for the first light side and the first dark side team that I think new players to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes want to focus on to get the best possible start to building up their roster. Uh, thank you to everyone who watched that video um, and all the comments that it received as well. Today, um, I'm going to address some of the comments I've had people asking me if there are other recommendations for other early teams that early or new game players should try and focus on outside of those first two that I recommended. So I'm going to pop a link to that video uh, for the best first uh, light side and dark side teams to farm as a new player. I'll pop a link in the top right hand corner just now. I'll also have one down below in the comments. Do check that out if you haven't already. But what we're going to do today is just look at five other recommendations of other teams I think new players uh, want to take a look at. First up, Bounty Hunters. Now, Bounty Hunters are an incredibly important team in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, and I guess you might not necessarily know that um, if you're a new player coming to the games. A lot of focus on light side and dark side at the beginning. Bounty Hunters are mostly dark side characters, but they do kind of straddle that line as we have some light side additions too. I'll go into that in a minute, but Bounty Hunters are incredibly important. You need a team of Bounty Hunters to unlock Chewie, uh, the legendary version of Chewie in-game. Uh, you also need Bounty Hunters and and their ships to unlock the Millennium Falcon and to go after the Executor, um, the Finalizer, and the Radus. So you need Bounty Hunters and their ships for all of those events. They're just incredibly important. On top of that, there's two awesome uh, roving events that come around every month or every month or so, uh, Rebel Roundup and also uh, the Bounty event where you can gain a ton of shards for various characters through those events. So they really are an important squad that you do want to build. Now this build that I have on screen right now, so that's Bosk, uh, Boba Fett, Greedo, Cad Bane, and IG-88. This used to be the build that I used to recommend to people um, a while ago. Now this is based on uh, the way the game was set up. I started playing this game gosh, a few years ago, at least two and a half, maybe three years ago now, and the game was very different, especially the early game. So characters that are easier to farm now were not so easy. They weren't so accessible right then. So this was the easiest um, to farm bounty hunter team. So this used to be the one that I recommend. However, I no longer recommend this team now as one to go for. Uh, even though the characters are all easy to go for, Greedo is not really worth it in my opinion. IG-88 is kind of squishy. Now you do need IG-88 in his ship, IG-2000, for all the um, legendary unlocks that I mentioned apart from Chewie um, but other than that I don't really recommend building up IG-88 at all. So instead, the build that I recommend people go for, uh, one of the builds I recommend people go for, is really this one that I had up on screen at the beginning. So that's Bosk, Boba Fett, Dengar, Cad Bane, and Jango Fett. I think this is a really great build. It's the build actually that I used to go after Chewie, although some people would use um, Boba Fett in the lead there. Either are, are viable. I really like uh, Bosk's lead. I think he's got a really awesome lead. It gives everyone extra protection, um, defense, uh, tenacity, just generally all round increases the survivability of your squad and um, really for the Chewy event you do need a lot of survivability on that squad although as I said some people use um, Boba Fett in the leader slot instead and they focus on potency both ways work I, I'll pop a link in the top right hand corner to my Chewy unlock video and also one down below now that said as I mentioned there are some light side bounty hunters that you might want to consider too um, notably of course uh, the Mandalorian and Grief Karga and both of them so neither of these guys were actually in the game at all when I first started farming bounty hunters. They're now in the game. Not only are they in the game, they're accelerated farms now, so they are really very accessible. You might not be able to go for them right off the bat the way you can some of the other bounty hunters, but they're really awesome additions. I think if you unlock Chewie uh, with either of these two on your squad, it's going to be an awful lot easier uh, than without them. The disintegration ability that um, uh, Mandalorian has is going to come in really handy, and uh, Grief Cargo is just an excellent support for this team too. Now a lot of people also use Aura Singh. Uh, her leadership ability can be really awesome, although you do need to really max it out. As you can see, I don't have much experience with that. I've hardly done anything with it at all. And then another bounty hunter who's recently become an awful lot more viable is Zam. Zam Wessel, and that's thanks to the addition of an Omicron on her uh, special ability Shapeshifter. Let's just take a quick look here. I believe that this comes into effect uh, if we just go right to, there we go. So nine. That's how you can tell if you've got an Omicron 
half it goes all the way up to all the way up to 11 all the way up to 9 so yes yeah, so this is a grand arena omicron as well so you're getting that benefit inside grand arena again as you can see here not someone i've invested in but someone you should consider investing in she's a very accessible bounty hunter Next, I want to talk about this trio right here. Uh, this is a potential 3v3 squad, although you could also use it. These tunes are powerful enough. You could also use them to take out many 5v5 squads um, in Grand Arena as well. This is a really potent matchup. Now, in that video uh, that I made way back when about the first uh, light side and dark side team that I think you should go for, I did kind of mention the Empire team, although they're not the team that I recommend in that video that you mainly focus on. But you are going to build up an Empire team just as you move through the game. And Palpatine, Papa Palpatine right there is probably going to be one of the first, if not the first, legendary unlock that you uh, achieve in the game. And Vader, of course, you're gaining shards for Vader as you move through the game anyway. An awesome tune. Mara Jade, Mara Jade, another recent addition to the game. Again, she's recently been made farmable. Now she is at the slower farm level, so it's going to take you a while to build her up to be able to unlock her. I only have her three here at the three-star level, but she is awesome. She has so much synergy with Emperor Palpatine. You're getting a bunch of bonus attacks. Vader has a ton of synergy with Palpatine as well when he's in the leader slot. He also gets additional turn meter. So these three here, they're just a powerhouse. There's so much synergy between them that they can take out much more powerful squads. And again, full uh, 5v3 squads. You can go in with three, they've got five, and you can just mow them down with this group here. You do need the Zetas on them, so you do want to spend those Zetas there, especially Merciless Massacre for Vader. Vader, uh, but this is an awesome setup and of course you can throw in whoever you like to fill this out with two extra empire tunes if you want to you've got a lot to choose from even at the beginning of the game sticking with the empire this is another squad uh, that you're going to hear me you're going to have he heard me uh, speak about in my videos especially in grand arena um it's Aiden versio and imperial troopers now the important tune here is Aiden. Aiden versio is the the tune that makes this work the imperial troopers you can use any imperial trooper that you want in there uh with the exception of um dark trooper the the droid one because the droid tag then he doesn't have that synergy with Aiden. but if it's any other imperial trooper you can use them in here um, and you will still get the same effect any other non-leader imperial trooper now Aiden versio i've actually unlocked Aiden versio on my free-to-play account that I, I don't really play. Every now and again, I dip in there. It's a brand new account that I started a few months ago, um, and I managed to unlock her on that account. That's because I happened to start right when the event came out. At the minute, I don't believe she's currently farmable, although I could be wrong about that. Um, but she is an awesome tune. So if you do have her already, and a lot of people who started the game within the last few months may have unlocked her, but may be unsure what to do with her, what you want to do is just get as many Imperial Troopers as you can and stick them on a team with her. Again, you need the Zeta and you need the Omicron. This skill really comes into play in Grand Arena. She will just dismantle enemy teams. As you can see here, this is a low gear team for me. I've only got her at three stars, and they're only a gear nine team here, but they get a massive punch up. I can take out um, 20, uh, 30,000 extra um, power on the enemy that I'm going against, and I can totally dismantle them with Aiden Versio and this Imperial Trooper squad right here. For that reason, I think they really are worth investing in at the beginning of the game because you get a lot of bang for your buck, even at the low gear level. Next, it's bugs. Classic. You got to get your Geo on, people. You got to get your Geo notions. Uh, firstly, because they are pretty accessible. A lot, a lot of the Geos are easily farmable um, at the beginning of the game. The ones you have to wait a little harder for, uh, Brood Alpha, for example, and Brood Alpha is unfortunately the Geo that really makes the Geo squad. You really need him in the leader slot there. Um, they, they're worth waiting for. So what you want to do is start farming these guys as soon as possible. Now, why do I recommend going after Geos? Well, there's a, a few good reasons here. First of all, as I was saying with all of the other teams, Teams, um, well, at least with the Empire and the uh, Iden Versio Trooper team, they are really going to help you when it comes to Grand Arena. But bugs, bugs are going to help you dominate even in Squad Arena at the beginning of the game, even if you don't have all of them yet. Yes, Brood Alpha um, really gets the synergy going and the kind of bugs turn meter situation that you can get rolling if you've got Brood Alpha in the leader slot. But even without that, two or three bugs on your squad are going to make a real difference in squad arena they're going to enable you to dominate squad arena is of course only important at the beginning of the game so it's worth farming them i think for that advantage if for nothing else on top of that they have ships 
Um, just like bounty hunters, you want to farm them partly because they're useful on their own, but partly because they're useful with their ships. Now, um, uh, the Geonosian ships don't immediately, they don't give you directly any legendary unlock, but again, they are excellent in both the fleet arena and grand arena as well. Definitely worth investing in. And then on top of that, um, you can use bugs as a full separatist squad to unlock one of the most important legendaries in the game padme amidala padme is essential you're definitely going to use her in grand arena i used bugs to unlock her i'll put a link in the top right hand corner and down below to that video check it out and get farming on your bugs next and finally it's another classic but an overlooked classic i think and that is ewoks again another one of these squads that i think has become more um viable more useful as a squad recently with the introduction of the omicron abilities now ewoks are i think often overlooked and this setup that i have here uh, not necessarily the very best setup um some people would use low gray in there and i do not have low gray yet he's one of the he's not quite as accessible as a lot of the ewoks um, so I just didn't bother to farm him. Um, I used Tebow instead. But a lot of these Ewoks are really, really accessible, especially Tebow, as I already mentioned, and Ewok Scout. You kind of get him at the beginning anyway. So this is a pretty accessible team. Now, the thing that really makes it is this Omicron ability on Chief Chirpa. And again, that's a grand arena Omicron. Those are the most valuable Omicrons, in my opinion, getting a ton of extra speed for all of these Ewoks. And that is the thing. This Ewok speed train is the thing you want to get going. Uh, you really want that Omicron for the extra speed, then you want to put as much speed as possible on Wicket and in, on Ewok Elder. And this is a really viable team for Grand Arena for both offense and defense. If you have the modded well and you've got enough speed, I think you could also dominate Squad Arena if you're using them near the beginning of the game. But of course, the really big reason that people farm Ewoks, and really I think until the introdu introduction of the Omicron recently, probably the only reason people bothered to farm Ewoks was for the 3PO unlock. I'll pop a link in the top right hand corner and down below to my 3PO unlock videos. Do check them out if you get a chance. You need a team of Ewoks, a team of fast Ewoks in order to unlock 3PO. 3PO, just like Padme, one of these super important legendaries because he forms part of a really important Grand Arena team and that's the CLS team. A very important team with CLS, 3PO, uh, 3 Park, Chewie, and Han. Now that is a really important offensive grand arena team you're going to want to farm it anyway so why not start investing in your ewoks at the beginning of the game again this is a team that when i was coming up i wouldn't necessarily have suggested people invest in near the beginning of the game partly because the characters were just a little harder to come by but the changes they've made to the whole farming economy in the game mean that these characters are a lot more accessible you're getting more shards of them and you as you farm them and secondly they didn't necessarily have a use outside of that 3po event but now they do thanks to the Oma cron get on them uh you'll be able to use them in grand arena honestly you won't be sorry well there you go folks those are five more teams to consider for players at the beginning of the game bounty hunters empire particularly the palpatine vader amara jade threesome Iden versio troopers bugs and ewoks um there you go there are some extra recommendations from me uh, but what do you think uh, what do you think about those ones that i've mentioned here are there any that i've missed any that maybe you are having or had great success with let me know down below thoughts comments criticisms always welcome can't wait to hear them well thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me today if you have enjoyed this video found it informative or entertaining in any way please consider giving it a like a thumbs up down below i really do appreciate it and it helps out the channel and hey while you're here why not consider subscribing to Leah Maiden Gameplay. I drop new gameplay videos for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes and Marvel Strike Force every single week, and I would love to have you along for the ride. That is all from me today. I'll see you in the next one. In the meantime, look after each other. And remember, the Force will be with you. Always.